الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين الحمد لله الذي خلق الإنسان من عدم وخلقه بكبت وخلقه من ضعف وخلقه أو خلق الإنسان من عجل فيثبت الله سبحانه وتعالى the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from nothing. It's between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And it is akin of this mankind to be always in a state of haste. We want everything to be very fast. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created mankind in a state of struggle. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ And praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one who created mankind in a state of weakness الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبا And subhanallah my brothers and sisters Islam we need to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who put our peak, the strength, our time of most, or I should say the utmost level of our energetic time between two weaknesses. Alhamdulillah, الذي جعل قوة الإنسان بين ضعفين. And that is in itself a reminder for us that we are weak. We were made weak and we will go back to the state of weakness. So that we are not taken away or driven away or take our strength, especially the youth who are here, so that we are not carried away with the strength whether it is the physical or the mental or the emotional strength that you have, you don't get carried away. It's a reminder that you will go back to weakness sooner or later. And we send our peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions, his wives, the mothers of the believers. And may he subhanahu wa ta'ala with his own mercy and forgiveness include us amongst him and gather us with them in the day of judgment. And may he subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لكل الألباب ويقول الحق في محكم التنزيل كذلك نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك Our youth and our children who are here today today the khutbah is dedicated to you it is dedicated to you because it is important for us and for you to understand the level or the status that you carry within the society or this world that we are living in. And when I say youth and adult, youth and children, I'm not only talking about those who are in the age of of what is what is known as teenagers we're talking about youth even though you might be over 20 you're still young you are in your young adulthood and even those brothers who are over the age of 40 you're still young and we are seeking or we're talking to that young person in you because the stories of the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I opened the khutbah with, they have great lessons for every one of us and especially for the youth. 
لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ So the number one reason why Allah talks about the prophets and messengers in the Qur'an, it is for us to gain lessons, عِبْرَ عِضَ So that we ourselves do not become a lesson for others. So that we gain lesson from others. And also part of the reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these stories in the Qur'an to comfort Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to comfort us, the believers, who are facing so many challenges nowadays. So that we find comfort in the stories of the prophets and messengers, such as the story of Musa alayhi salam, which will be the topic of the khutbah today, focusing on the lessons that we can gain. دروس مهمة لشباب الأمة في قصة كريم الله موسى عليه السلام. In the story of our beloved Prophet Musa عليه السلام. So it is important to understand that Allah سبحانه وتعالى did not mention the stories and specifically the story of Musa عليه السلام without a wisdom and without a cause. There are so many benefits, my brothers and sisters in Islam. One of the most important things that I'd like to focus on the khutbah today is the aspect of role models. Shababuna fi hadihi al-ayyam wa tahaddath an al-banin wa al-banat yaftaqiduna ila al-quduwat. Our youth nowadays, both males and females, are thirsty for role models, my brothers and sisters. They are actually lacking factual and real role models. This is a reality. You ask any youngster here today, you ask them, what are you looking for? The majority of them will tell you that they are actually looking for someone that they can relate to. Role models that they can basically understand. However, today in the khutbah, we will be talking about different type of role models. Role models that you don't have to basically spend hundreds of thousands of dollars so that you can dress like them. So you, you don't have to go out of your way to go and buy the expensive shoes that they wear or the certain way that they dress. Or you don't have to worry about them forgetting about you or do they even know you? You don't have to worry about the role model. We will talk about role models today that you don't have to worry about them forgetting about you and ignoring you when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khudwa aw khudwaat lan yatabarra'u minka yawm al-qiyamah. They will not basically, you know, forsake you and say, you know what, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. All I did is that I dress like this, or I cut my hair like this, or I dance like this, and you dance like me. That's it. That's your problem. I became a shaitan, and you followed me. This is not the type of role models that we're going to be talking about. We will be talking about a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa alayhi salam. The prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is whose name is mentioned the most in the Qur'an, 136 times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about or mentioned the name of Musa alayhi salam. Mi'a wa sittun wa thalathuna marra dhukira ism hadha al-nabi, kalimu Allah Musa alayhi salam fil Qur'an, wa fi akthar min thalathina mawdi'an. And in more than 30 places or 30 different surahs in the Holy Qur'an. Now my brothers and sisters, when we talk about Musa alayhi salam, sometimes the youngsters might wonder, how did Musa alayhi salam look like? كيف كان مظهر Musa alayhi salam? How did he look like? Was he white? How was his hair? Musa alayhi salam is important to us as believers for several reasons. And I'll just mention, number one is that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Musa alayhi salam in the journey of Mi'raj. Ra'ahu al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi 
حادثة أو رحلة الإسراء والمعراج رآه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في السماء السادسة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم met موسى عليه السلام in the sixth level of the heavens or sky number six if you may want to call it and موسى عليه السلام is the Prophet of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was advised by and counseled by so that you and I don't have to pray 50 times a day. This is Musa alayhi salam. Yani, subhanallah, Musa alayhi salam gave his expertise with Bani Israel to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and he said that your ummah and he was concerned about you. Musa alayhi salam was concerned about the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And he told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam that your ummah cannot bear the 50 prayers or 50 times every day. And he is the one who recommended Muhammad to go back and ask Allah for takhfir, for reduction. And he kept going back and forth until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it five. But you're getting the reward of 50. This is Musa alayhi salam. And the Prophet sallallahu described Musa alayhi salam. فَقَالَ رَأَيْتُ لَيْلَةَ أُسْرِيَ بِي Musa alayhi salam, rajulan adam, a shadeed sumrah. Yani Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet salam, described him as someone who is dark in skin. Tiwalan, bimana, anna hu kana tawila qama. And also he was tall. Musa alayhi salam, as Prophet Muhammad salam, salam, described him. That he is somebody who was tall, he was not short. وَكَانَ جَعْدًا وَالْعَلَمَاءَ فَسَّرُوا الْجَعْدِ بِمَعْنَيَيْنِ قَلِيلُ اللَّحْمِ وَكَذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ كَانَ مُلْتَوِيَ الشَّعْرِ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ أُخْرَى وَصَفَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ شَعْرَهُ أَنَّهُ كَانَ بَيْنَ الْجَعْدِ وَالْإِسْتِوَاءِ So in other words, as for the hair, or the other description of the body of Musa alayhi salam, he was somebody who did not, he was not a chunky person. In other words, he was what? He was somebody who was slim and strong. And his hair was somewhat curly, was not too curly of a hair. And these are, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the youngsters who are here, these are the descriptions of a man who is what? who is physically strong. هذه الصفات هي صفات القوة. These are the, يعني سبحان الله, the descriptions that befit or fit perfectly a person who is قوي, who is strong, as Allah سبحانه وتعالى described them in the Quran, Surah Al-Qasas. إِنَّ خَيْرَ مَنِ اسْتَجَرْتَ الْقَوِيُّ الْأَمِينَ As one of those two ladies that Musa A.S. served and helped, told her father that, Oh, my father, Retain him, hire him, for that the best of the people that you can hire to work for you, to serve you, to be the man of the house is a person who is what? Who's strong physically and emotionally and mentally, and so was Musa alayhi salam, and who is Amin, who has the characteristics of what? Of Amana, trustworthiness, well, Amana. As for the trustworthiness, my brothers and sisters in Islam, our youngsters, it is one of the most important elements that you should have in you so that you can be that man, that young man that qualifies. And also, for the young sisters, you have to have this quality, the trustworthiness, so that you can be that good and that respectful and that strong mother for the children of our society to come. The lessons that we can gain, my brothers and sisters stem, and because the restriction of the time, I'm going to go over them very quickly. The first lesson, young man, young woman, your relationship with your mother. Alaqatuka bi ummik. The mother of Musa alayhi salam was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْسَلِينَ إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the mother of Musa. And you should question this. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about the father of Musa? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the story of Musa salam, in several places, he focuses on the mother of Musa alayhi salam? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not inspire the father of Musa, but rather the mother of Musa? And the description or the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the feeling of the mother. You should understand that you the feeling of your mother, O oh young man, O oh young woman. The feeling of your mother, no matter how old you are, is no different than the feeling of the mother of Musa alayhi salam. She was afraid. She was worried. She was concerned. Despite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was inspiring her and promising her. After a while, after she did what she had to do because of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she put baby Musa in the basket into the river. And imagine, where is Musa as salam going? He's going into the hands of the enemy that she's afraid of. And what happens after that? So that you can understand why your mother worries about you. Even when you are 40, 50 years old. Why does your mother worry about you? And worry about what you're eating, what you're drinking. Whether you slept or not. Whether you have done something good for yourself or no. She's worried about you. But the problem is that you and I don't understand and feeling. We don't know what the mother is going through. We think, or you and I think, as soon as I become 15, 16 years old, that's it. I am done. I'm a man, I'm a big man, and I'm a young lady, and I can do whatever I want, and I don't need the mother. But wallahi, I tell you, one dua of your mother can solve the problems of the entire world for you. One dua. Dua min ummik. Qad taftah laka abwab. La tahlum bi anna satuftah bi wajib. One dua of your mother can open, subhanAllah, doors that you have never thought or dreamt of, that they will be open on your face. The mother of Musa, subhanAllah, despite the support of Allah, despite that Allah inspired her and promised her, she still, subhanAllah, she was a human being. She was a mother. And she was worried. Because of how worried she, she was, she was about to disclose the secret and go and tell Fir'aun and his soldiers that that baby in your household is mine, I want him back. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept her heart strong, subhanAllah. So imagine what your mother is going through. Imagine. There are no miracles nowadays. But the dua of your mother can make miracles for you. They can make miracles for you. And don't forget, the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Ummuk, thumma ummuk, thumma ummuk, thumma ummuk, thumma abuk. This is the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi For a man who came and sought advice, mother, the mother, your mother, especially if your mother is alone, either she is divorced or your father has passed away or that your father is away somewhere. You are in a more dire obligation to be by her and to support her. This is our first lesson. Your relationship with your mother. Do not forget her. Make sure that no matter how old you are, even if you are 70 year old, make sure that you take care of your mother. Win the pleasure of your mother, because without that, you will never be successful in this life. Lesson number two, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alaqatuk Allah. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, people think that Musa alayhi salam became that strong man and he became that subhanallah, yani that, yani that the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without doing any effort. It was first and foremost because of the support and the dua and the the strength of the mother. And then the tarbiyah that she gave. 
And on top of that, Musa alayhi salam, he was, he was a young man who was close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He exercised what he was taught by his mother. So he was someone who was relying on Allah. He trusted Allah. He knew that the promise of Allah is true. He knew that, he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him victory. He knew and he believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the promise of Allah. He put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, he was trying to avoid the haram. He was avoiding the haram. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him that status. He was sabur. He was patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that status. So the youth who are here, the young men and women, the young ladies who are here, the young brothers who are here, who are looking and asking, how can I achieve a better status? How can I be closer to Allah? How can I be a better productive or productive person in the society, in my community, in my country, in my ummah? The answer is fix your relationship with your mother and fix your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah. Avoid the haram. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see that Allah will open the doors of dunya for you. The dunya will come to your feet. Allah it will come to your feet. If you are, if you have a good relationship with Allah, you do your prayers on time. You avoid the haram. You are there when somebody needs the help. And we will see this in the story of Musa in one of the other lessons. When you are there for people, when they are in a dire need, even if you are in a desperate situation, Allah will be there for you. He will take care of your matters and affairs. He will fix everything for you. And remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and this is subhanAllah very true in the story of Musa alayhi salam. Remember Allah at the time of ease and prosperity when you have nothing to worry about. When you're chilling as they say nowadays. When you are relaxing, when you have no worries, remember Allah. Be close to Allah. Be in the Quran. Try to help someone. Do a noble action. Then you will reap the, the fruits when you are in a desperate situation, when you are in difficulty. And that's exactly what happened with Musa alayhi salam. When Musa alayhi salam, my brothers and sisters, the youngsters were here. When he left Egypt, fearing for his life, and he arrived to Median, which was in the Sham area. So a, a very long distance to travel. Musa alayhi salam, he was himself a traveler who has been pursued, exactly like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who was chased out of Mecca. Musa alayhi salam, he arrives to Median and he was also being chased. They were after him. They wanted to capture him and kill him. Musa alayhi, alayhi salam traveled so much of a long distance. He traveled a very long distance and he came to Median. And as soon as he arrived, what did he see? He saw a group of strong uh, farmers or shepherds rather watering their sheep. وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدْيًا He wanted to drink water. وَجَدَ عَلَيْهُ أُمَّةً مِنَ النَّاسِ يَسْكُونَ وَوَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمَا يعني بعيد عنهما امرأتين تدودان والحال لا يستدعي السؤال قال ما خطبكما قالت لا نسقي حتى يسر رعاء وأبونا شيخ كبير so when he saw the situation, when he saw the two ladies keeping away because they were weak and they, they didn't want to basically push their way through, through the crowds of other basically shepherds, the men who were crowded over the water, Musa alayhi salam who was a des in a desperate situation, he is the one who is in need of help. However, because Musa is young, because Musa has strength, because Musa alayhi salam is looking for any opportunity like you should be doing. You should be looking for any opportunity of doing good. Even you are, even if you are broke, 
even if you are financially not capable of doing anything good, even if you think that you cannot make a difference, you have that basically, you know, subhanAllah, hopeless feeling in you, you should keep trying doing good. And that's exactly what Musa as did. Musa as did not wait and say, you know what, let's, let's, let's bargain. How much are you going to pay me? I came from a long distance. I need some something, some provision, some food. He didn't. Immediately, subhanAllah, because he knows that Allah will pay him back. He was des- in a desperate situation. He went and he helped the two ladies. Took their sheep and watered them and gave them back. After that, what did Musa do? Musa alayhi salam, this is our another lesson, my brothers and sisters. The youngsters were here. The next lesson is that when you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you show your weakness to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to your call. And Allah has his own ways to respond. Despite the fact that he's strong man, despite the fact that he's strong, that because just because he's you know strong and young, he didn't say, you know what, I'm just gonna just do whatever and I can do whatever I can do. No. He showed his desperation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any khair that he no conditions. <laughs> he said, I'm, I am in the des- desperately in need of anything you give me, oh Allah. And the answer came immediately. Immediately. And when I say immediately, my brothers and sisters, it is immediately because that's what Allah says in the Quran. One of the two young ladies came walking in a very modest, bashful manner. Not only, but also she was expecting the same. And this is a message for our young sisters, our young ladies, our young generation, both men and women, both boys and girls. Modesty is it's, it's a commodity nowadays. It is something that is, so apparently that's becoming like what? Like something that you cannot find nowadays. But it is something that you and I need very much. Because without haya, there is no life. Without haya, if there is no modesty, there is no bashfulness, you will do whatever you want to do. إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْتَحْ مَا If you have no bashfulness, no modesty, you're not shying from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you do whatever. Like people are doing. They're living like animals. And you are not one of them. You don't have to be one of them. You have to be modest in everything. This is not shying away from Haq. And subhanAllah, she invited him. And the invitation not, well, was not from her. It was from the father. Come over. And subhanAllah, my brother says it. One of the two young ladies suggested to the father to re- retrieve or to hire her. Because of what? Because she saw two characteristics. And this is our another lesson. My young brothers and sisters. The amana and the quwa that we talked about earlier. The strength and the trustworthiness. You have to have these two qualities. <laughs> and that is to understand how Allah answered the dua of Musa. But sometimes you worry. I'm at that age, I need to get married. I'm having a hard time finding a job. Fix your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see what happens. This is Musa who came with zero. Zero, he didn't have anything. He didn't know anyone in Median. And guess what happened? He got a job. He got married. He had a family. And on top of that, on the way back to Egypt, after probably 10 years or so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him and revealed to him and he was the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you can't be exactly like Musa as but you can do what he did. You can do what he did. So you can, inshallah ta'ala, be successful like Musa as ma tasma'un wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum sallam sallam sallam
الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ثم ما بعد I'll conclude and I apologize that I went a few minutes over the time أختم حديثي بأمر مهم للشباب للفتية والفتيات to all the young ladies and the young men who are here and all of us you gotta understand that probably sometimes when you hear these kind of speeches you feel pressure that's the Imams and the Mashaykh are expecting us to be angels? No. You're not an angel. You are a human being. You are a human being and you need to understand it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you in a pure fitrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you in a pure nature. Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al fitrah. And a proof is here in the story of Musa. When Musa alayhi salam mistakenly just pushed that man and killed him by mistake, what did he say? In other words, he took responsibility for his mistake, but at the same time, he attributed a part of the inclination towards this mistake to shaitan. And you need to understand that the shayateen around you are probably shayateen and this are more than the shayateen of the jinn. Yes, the satans of the human satans around you nowadays are more than the jinn shayateen. Because they are shayateen and is that are coming and subhanAllah trying to drag you to the hellfire. They are going to the hellfire and they want to drag you with them. So it's your choice that when you make a mistake that you acknowledge it that you say that I have done a mistake oh Allah like Musa alayhi salam qala rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli he said I wronged myself oh my lord he acknowledged that there is Allah that there is someone who will hold him accountable and he admitted to his mistake when you make a mistake be a man be a real man and say that I made a mistake and acknowledge and make tawbah I promise Allah as Musa as Salah promised. Because of what you bestowed upon me, Allah, I shall never be a supporter to a Dalim, a wrongdoer ever again. So be like Musa alayhi salam. Acknowledge your mistake. Be a strong person. Be a strong man. Be a strong woman. And tawbil Allah and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you with open arms. Never be hopeless in the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are some of the lessons for our youth. And Musa alayhi salam is indeed one of those role models, like our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that you need to read about and learn more about and follow. Because of the day of judgment, he will not be like these singers or basketball players uh, or other basically celebrities who will say, that we forsake you, we don't know you. Huh? You want to go to the hellfire? You're welcome. You can come with us, but they will never help you with any subhanahu. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and protect all of us. May subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وعلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وارض اللهم عن الأربعة الخلفاء أئمة الخلفاء أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وسائر صحاب النبي كلمعين وعلنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك وأسألك يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا واحفظ أولادنا اللهم احفظنا واحفظ شبابنا اللهم احفظنا واحفظ فتياننا وفتياتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا وإياهم الفاحش والشرور ومضلات الفتن ما ظهر منها وبطنك على كل شيء قدير وبالجهة الجدير عباد الله إن الله يعبر بلاده والحسن ويتعد القربة وإنها الفحشاء والممكن والبغي يعبر من علم تذكرون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم